So, as some of you know, I'm back watching and reviewing Impact Wrestling each week, and it feels good. It feels really good, actually, because, again, it feels like I'm at home. But last week's show did not feel so good. I thought it was an epic steaming pile of suck. Like, who would actually take the script for that show, look at it, and say, I sign off on that. That looks like good professional wrestling programming. To me, you'd have to be delusional or completely out of touch or totally incompetent to think so. And is that what we've got out of the current creative crew for Global Force Wrestling? I guess only time is going to tell, but it wasn't a good show. This week's show, there was at least a little bit of progress, a little bit more that I enjoyed, a little bit more uh, that I cared about, so I'll take that. But there are still several problems with this product, so many things that I don't care about, uh, people that I don't care about, and just gapingly obvious logic fails that are just hard for me to kind of wrap my fingers around. Like, I just can't figure out how you could have these gaping logic holes that you could drive a Mack truck through. But anyways, let's talk about this week's show. And of course, the big Mazda ball kind of hanging over this company right now is the status of Alberto El Patron based off of the recent incident with him and Paige at an airport. GFW made the decision to suspend him, which sounds good from a publicity and PR standpoint. Even though, to me, I thought we lived in an innocent until proven guilty society in theory. And I did a video about this topic asking an important question. What if Alberto El Patron is innocent? And I'll put the link to that video in the description box. If you haven't checked it out already, I recommend that you do so. Because I feel like it is important and it touches on some important things. And some important details. And the fact that everybody seems to like to rush to judgment and automatically take the side of the woman in this particular case. Um, and in so many other cases, frankly. But the suspension, while it looks good, really doesn't do much because you've written Alberto, who is your world champion, into so much of your shows for the next month that because you're on the tape delay, because you have your tapings done a month out, it's actually advantageous for the company because at the moment, they don't have to do anything in terms of changes creatively. They can kick the can down the road a month until that Destination X show on August 17th. Um, so the suspension looks good in theory, but other than maybe not being able to work some house shows, and how much does that really matter to Alberto at this point anyways, it really doesn't do much. For a month, there's absolutely no real teeth to it. So keep that in mind as we're talking about this week's show. So we kick off with your world champion being called down to the ring by LAX, and we're going to find out that Alberto El Patron is a new member of LAX, and... From a faction standpoint, makes sense. You would want to have the world champion there. At least we're not sitting there and using the old Impact Wrestling line from the TNA days for so many years of how the belts have all the power and we just can't figure out what power that actually is. Um, but I will say it's kind of awkward knowing kind of the situation that's going down. It's kind of awkward and uphill battle to present Alberto as a babyface. Um because a lot of people aren't going to really be down with that. So it's just kind of awkward to to watch it kind of playing out on TV. And this segment to me was just kind of awkward. Again, there was nothing spectacular about it. There was nothing, frankly, really interesting about it. It seemed like all the focus was on the 50-something-year-old guy in Conan whose best days in the business are well behind him, uh, trying to talk sense to the 40-year-old world champion all the while. The LAX faction, as is so often the case when it involves Conan now, is just sitting there in the background, not getting any shine, not getting any attention. It felt like it was all about Conan. And that's not what it should be about at this point. And furthermore, stop talking about WWE shit. Focus on going forward. Focusing on, instead on how you're going to help the Impact Wrestling show be better and how you're going to help Global Force Wrestling become a better national and international wrestling band, brand. And then once Alberto says he doesn't want to be a part of this and LAX starts beating him down, what was the point of all the shit you did last week just to sit there and basically undercut it right away this week in the opening segment? Why do all this big shit about talking about how he's the new LAX member just to sit there and have them beat him down because he decides he doesn't want to join? I don't get it. But anyways, we'll talk more about this when we get to the main event. We got a Super X Cup a match with Andrew Everett and ACH. A couple of things that stood out to me. First, the Hurricane Rana is got to be to me. Maybe alongside with the super kick, as somebody pointed out on Twitter, the most overused move in professional wrestling. Like the Hurricane Rana looks good when executed properly. Problem is a lot of the guys don't execute it properly. It looks quite sloppy, actually, very rehearsed and choreographed. But when done right, it can look spectacular. 
The problem is, is so many people do it, you become desensitized to it, where now it has the same impact, in some cases less impact, than a stiff right hand. And that's stupid. You're talking about a guy jumping up on somebody, mind you, and flipping them over by their head. That should be something that always is a spectacular move. But again, when everybody does it, it doesn't matter. Then when you look at this match, the crowd really wasn't into it. Andrew Everett does a couple of spectacular moves, does a springboard drop kick, and then a moonsault off of the top rope out of the ring, and it got absolutely no reaction. Again, just because you can do a bunch of spots like this, that doesn't mean they're effective. That doesn't mean they're good. That doesn't mean that you should do them. And I look at this match and I see ACH. He at least has some personality. He has a little bit of charisma. The match didn't play off of that at, at all. That's what the match should be built around, is ACH's personality. Allowing him to shine. You need people with personality. He has a little bit of it. There's something there. Your match should be built around that, not just both guys trying to get all their shit in and throwing out there this rehearsed choreographed bullshit where it's all about spots. The right guy won, in my opinion, but the match was blasé as fuck. And ultimately, I don't care how many spots you do, it's, this match is a perfect example of it. If the crowd doesn't care, then your spots were stupid, period. <clears throat> so we got a Gail Kim segment where she makes an announcement where she's talking about this is going to be her last year in wrestling, which I thought was already well known. I don't know why we needed to dedicate a television segment to it. Now, part of that could be is because I've never been a fan of Gail Kim and I've always felt that she was overrated, but I also will not deny the fact that she's been a very important figure in the history of that company in terms of establishing women's wrestling. And I mean, there was a long period of time that one of the things you actually wanted to watch on Impact Wrestling for TNA was that knockouts division. Sometimes it was the best programming that they had. It was some of the highest rated segments that they had. They used to do that shit really, really well. Most certainly better than anything WWE had done with their women for years and still does with their women. But again, why do we do this segment um, if this isn't new news? Like, people know this. And granted, it, 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 it's got good sentimental value. Um, but why not bring out a heel knockout to interrupt and get some heat on her? If you're already establishing that the, the time clock is ticking on Gail Kim. Why not get the maximum return on the investment that you possibly can in the remaining time that you have her? Why not bring out a Sienna or somebody else to talk shit to her, to try and get some heat on themselves? I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. This was an opportunity here to do something more out of this segment and give me something I could have cared about. And instead, you just got an announcement of old news that I thought everybody already knew. Uh, then you dive right in without any commercial break or anything. As Gail Kim's walking out, it's kind of awkward just to see Chris Masters come out. I appreciate the spontaneity of this, but it, it leads to the shit again with the swole mates. If you insist on doing the network's bidding and you have to do the network's bidding, can we at least make it good? At least maybe make it something that you kind of announce and build up to? Do a pose off. Do an arm wrestling challenge. I mean, there are things that maybe some of the hardcore fans aren't going to like very much, but there are things that you could do that could have made this segment look better than this because instead they kind of did a half pose down, but nothing really happened. It's like, what was the point of all of this? other than, again, to do the network's bidding. And again, if you're going to do the network's bidding, can we at least make it better than what you got here? I I'm just saying. You know, and, you know, you look at the Swole Mates and their uh, show that's coming on Pop TV, and you're asking yourself, what the fuck does that have to do with Impact Wrestling other than doing the network's bidding? Exactly. It's a great question. The same question you should be asking about why in the bluest of blue fucks was Damus versus Octagon Cito a match on Impact Wrestling? Who the fuck are these guys, and why are they getting a match here, and why should I care about it? And all the time the commentators are trying to compare Octagon Cito to Rey Mysterio, all that's going to do is remind you that he's not Rey Mysterio, and that you probably would rather see Rey Mysterio. This match was bad. Damus was terrible. You've only got two hours of television each week. You have a roster that you desperately need to try and make stars out of. You need to try and get over. Why in the hell would you take upwards of 15 minutes of total television time and devote it to two guys that aren't on your fucking roster? At least if you're going to do this, then spread the wealth and have Octagon Cito face somebody in your X division. 
then that way at least you could tie that into somebody on your roster, maybe giving the people watching somebody to actually care about. Who would actually care about Damus and Octagon Cito? I know I did it, and I still have absolutely no clue why the hell this match was on impact. Why would you dumb idiots give television time to these guys? That's stupid. Because you get nothing out of it. And the match was a nothing. Um, this Impact Grand Championship concept of doing the rounds, I appreciate being different. I'm not sure that I necessarily like the round structure. I think it's kind of awkward, too, because you do it in three-minute intervals. Um, it, it's really hard to get anything going, and as soon as they get anything going from a wrestling standpoint, you're stopping and taking a break. A uh, couple of suggestions I might make is maybe make it five-minute rounds instead. It gives you a little bit more time to do things. Uh, stop announcing the results after each round. Maybe wait until the very end. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I look at Moose, though, and I see big potential. Like, I'm excited to see him. He's got a ways to go to me before he's a real franchise player for them. But at some point in time, that should be the focus, is making Moose a franchise guy for them, much more than you would, let's say, in Alberto Alpatron. I do think there's money there in Moose. But he needs work. Uh, but he's over with the crowd. You know, when he does the moose, 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 the people care, the people respond. That's something. You should be plastering this guy everywhere, all over the place. You should be making him into something. And I feel like they're on the right track with that. Um, but this match with Marafuji, I barely even remember what happened in the match, honestly. And maybe, again, it was because of the whole concept of the Grand Championship. I don't know. But EC3 was out there on commentary, the man in black. Best commentary of the night because he didn't say shit. And what did confuse me is, as somebody new to this Grand Championship uh, scoring system, EC3 interferes by hitting Marafuji in the head with the ring bell. Uh, is this a non-contest? Would Marafuji win via disqualification? It would have been nice if the commentators maybe addressed this. That's all I'm saying. Uh, one other segment I really enjoyed um, was Trevor Lee versus William Weeks. And don't get me wrong, I still enjoyed some of Marafuji and Moose in part because I had Moose, because I had EC3, and I'm really looking forward to that story playing out. Trevor Lee being the pretend quasi-X Division champion. Okay, I'm cool with this. His opponent, William Weeks. To me, they should have called them Wee Willie Wilkins, baby, if you will. I actually dig this story quite a bit. Who's the real X Division champion? You want your title back, you come get it from me, I should be the one carrying the belt. An easy, natural way to get heat on the heel, an easy, natural way to get the crowd behind the babyface. What I don't understand, though, and again, from a logic fail standpoint, from the point where you could drive a Mack truck through it, one, why is security trying to stop Sanjay Dutt when Trevor Lee stole his X Division title on national television where everybody could see it last week? Why are you trying to stop Sanjay Dutt? Why is nobody in an authority role coming out and demanding that Trevor Lee hand it over or he's suspended? And then once Sanjay eventually comes through the crowd and goes after Trevor Lee, Trevor Lee still gets the title and starts going up the ramp to go backstage and Sanjay Dutt's just standing in the ring. The dude freaking took your X Division title. Why the hell are you not chasing after him? I mean, it's shit like that. That's not that hard to put together. That would make all the sense in the world thinking about if somebody stole some shit from you, why would security be holding you back? And then why wouldn't you do everything you can to chase this dude down? That makes a big difference. It does. It's not nitpicking. I just don't see how it's that fucking hard to not be able to write this shit in a better, more believable way. Because you have a little something here with this story. I'm interested. Imagine how much more interested I would be if I wasn't focusing on the obvious Logic fails here. I'm just saying. This whole shit that was playing out throughout the night with Grado and Joseph Park, I don't care. Fat Colt Cabana at this point does nothing for me, but if he humors other people, so be it fine. But again, talking about basic logic. If you're talking about Grado needs to marry somebody to be able to stay in the U.S. to be able to still wrestle for Impact Wrestling... Why would he be going after Laurel Van Ness, who's Canadian? Why the hell would that matter? Why the hell would marrying her make any difference if she's a Canadian citizen? And again, this is not 
something where it's a nitpick because she even mentions in her Twitter that she's a Canadian wrestler. Like, seriously, again, who writes this crap? And who is that Congo Kong dude? To me, I'm like, maybe we should focus on this guy a little bit more. I mean, I'm just saying, I look at this and I'm like, it cannot be that hard to think this shit out ahead of time. I expect these type of logic fails out of WWE and this stupidity out of WWE. I come to watch a different company because I say, hey, if you don't have the production values, if you don't have the budget and you don't quite have the star talent, at least make sure that your characters are on point. At least make sure your stories are on point. Easy to follow, that makes sense, that build interest. And of course, as this company has done for so many years, they just fall short in that area. New name, same old shit. Again, why would he need to marry a Canadian in order to stay in the United States? Who's writing this shit? And then we get to the main event. It's LAX versus Alberto and Lashley. I understand LEX are your tag team champions, and right now apparently have absolutely no threat to their tag team titles, have nobody that they're feuding with, because again, why would you want to do that? But more so, you have your current world champion and your former world champion, and it feels like they're kind of being taken to the limit by the tag team champions, and I'm sorry, that's not how it should work. Alberto and Lashley should be dominant here. They should be owning LAX, not sitting there and in a real competitive back and forth match. That's not how this shit works. It's not the way it should work. Because ultimately, when you get to the point where LAX is beating down Alberto El Patron again after the match is done, it just doesn't have the same impact on you. Because now these guys had to beat them down uh, because these guys were too good. They just beat them down because they're pissed off. And why would Lashley come out and help Alberto at the beginning of the show just to, at the end of the show, put the freaking bandana on his head and walk backstage and look and just keep walking? That, that makes no sense. That makes zero sense. Because if, that's, if that makes any sense at all, why in the hell would you have him make the save early on in the night? When Alberto's already getting beaten down. So you stop that beating just so that way at the end of the night, you can just sign off on another beating happening again. Who writes this shit? Who thinks this makes any damn sense whatsoever? Now, what are you going to tell me? Bobby Lashley's going to join a LAX? Again, that wouldn't make much sense either because he's already gotten beaten down by him. What, are you going to try and do the whole thing of the bait and switch? He sucked Alberto in? Give me a break. I just look at this product right now, and even in the short time I've been back watching it, I'm really struggling to try and figure out what their whole purpose is here, what their whole direction is, what you're trying to establish with a new name as your identity. What are you going to be about? Who are you going to be about? How are you going to be about getting there? And most importantly of all, when are we going to get there? Where are we going? And why should I care? And this week again, even though I enjoyed the show a little bit more, even though the first hour really dragged for me, hour two was a little bit better, I, I'm left asking those important questions because right now I have no idea what the hell this company is doing or what they're trying to accomplish. I just hope that the next couple of weeks get a little bit better, a little bit better, and then maybe we'll get a good show August 17th with Destination X because God knows they need it right now because this hasn't been very good.